trying to be up close to it. Yeah. Hi, good morning and welcome back. Again, let me see by a show of hands if anyone came into contact with any information regarding this case since you left yesterday evening. Please raise your hand. I see no hands. So Ms. Jensen, you may proceed. Thank you, Ron. It calls Marlon Purifoy. All right, sir, can you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give to be the true selfie guy? Yes, sir. You can speak up in the mic. Please. Yes, sir. You can put your hand down. Okay. <laughs> Um, will you state your full name, please? Marlon Devon Purifoy. And Mr. Purifoy, how old are you? Uh, 45. What is your date of birth? 51074. And um, Mr. Purifoy, how many felony convictions do you have? I think about six or seven. Okay. And do you also have a crime of dishonesty? Uh, a, a petty theft? Yeah, petty theft, yeah. Now, are you currently serving a prison sentence? Uh, yes, ma'am. How long is your sentence? 30 years. 30 years? Yes, ma'am. And what are you serving, what's your charge? Uh, attempt to murder. And was that for um, attacking somebody with a hammer? Uh, correct, ma'am. Now, Mr. Purefoy, were you originally looking at a possible life sentence? Uh, correct, yes, ma'am. And did your prosecutor agree to give you a, a cap of 30 years? Yes, ma'am. I was not your prosecutor. No, you were my prosecutor. Was Mr. Myers your prosecutor? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and was that agreement for your cooperation in this case? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> now, when you were sentenced, obviously your judge still gave you 30 years, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you gotten any other benefit for your cooperation in this case? Uh, no, ma'am. Now, based on testifying in this trial, are you hoping that your judge will reduce your sentence? Yes, ma'am. And you're aware that the state attorney's office can file a motion and ask your judge to reduce your sentence? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Purify, has anybody promised you anything? No, ma'am. Mr. Purefoy, do you know uh, this defendant seated over here, Donald Wayne Hartung? Yes, ma'am. Correct. I do know him. Okay. And when did you when did you first meet Mr. Hartung? The year and date, if you recall. Probably about March, the end of March of 2016. And um, is that around the date that you were arrested for your hammer charge? Yeah, about February. I was arrested February for that charge. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Around that date. Now, were you housed with Mr. Hartung at the uh, Escambia County Jail? Yes, ma'am. And when I say housed, um, what does that mean? We was in the same pod together. Okay, and what's a, what's a pod? Like 24 people in a pod together. Okay. And then within that pod, um, are there different cells? Yes, ma'am. It's okay. 12 different cells. Okay. Now, were you in the same cell as Mr. Hartung? Uh, no, ma'am. But could you go to each other's cells? Yeah, I slept on top. He slept on top. Okay. <coughs> did you, while you were in the same pod, did you and Mr. Hartung start talking to one another? Yes, ma'am. And what types of things did you did you talk about at first? Talk. We talk about football. He like he liked Alabama. I like Florida State. 
And did you talk to Mr. Hartung on a regular basis? Yeah, all the time. And when you say all the time, like in a week, how many times would you speak with Mr. Hartung? Well, I come down in a week's time, probably about five, six times. He always sent people for me and stuff. I'm sorry? He always sent people for me. What do you mean he'd send people for like, you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, send time to my room. I might be uh, in my room sleep or something. He'll t send somebody down there to get me and stuff. Okay. So okay. he would send somebody to come get you? Correct. And then you would go to his cell? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, did he ever go to your cell? No, he never went to my cell. Okay. Always his? Always his. Why Cause, was that? Because people were scared of him. Oh. And my cellar was scared of him, too. Why? They thought he was a witch. Now, did you tell um, Mr. Hartung why you were in jail? Yeah, correct, ma'am. Okay. And did you, um, <clears throat> at some point, did you start talking to him about your case? Yes, ma'am, correct. Did you also s discuss um, religion with Mr. Hartung? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and what was the nature of your conversations? We used to, we used to talk about voodoo, <clears throat> Wicca, and stuff like that. He believed in Wicca, and I told him I believed in voodoo. Okay. Um, now, did you actually believe in voodoo? No, 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 oh. ma'am. Okay. Why did you tell, well, why did you tell him that? I just told him that, you know what I'm saying, cause just hear him talk, you know what I'm saying, make him comfortable for his life. Now, at some point, did um, Mr. Hartung give you a list of some, like, Wiccan books or something? Yes, he, he gave me some books uh, the, uh, to look at and stuff, the order and stuff. Okay. He tried to get me, oh, okay. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 376. Just take a look at it and see if you recognize it. Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. And is that a list um, of books and information that Mr. Hartung gave you? Correct, ma'am. And is that his handwriting on there? Correct. That's his handwriting. Okay. Judge, at this time I would move State's 376 in evidence. Any objection? No objection. Was, um, was Mr. Hartung like, trying to get you to join? Yeah, he's trying to get me to join. Now, did Mr. Hartung start talking to you about this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you and Mr. Hartung would have these conversations, was anyone else around? No, ma'am. Mr. Purefoy, did you ever see any paperwork that Mr. Hartung made? I never had? seen Mr. Hartung paperwork or nothing. Are you able to watch um, any kind of CDs or DVDs in jail? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Hartung leave his cell much that you saw? He never left his cell. The only time he left his cell to go get his trays and stuff. And that take like lunch trays and dinner trays and breakfast trays. That's it. Okay, so you would see him leave to go get food? Yeah, he come, he'll come downstairs and is that, that take like two or three minutes to get. Okay. Um, what about for showers? Oh, he never took a shower. What about um, going to medical? I never seen him go to medical. Okay. What about if he would have to go to court? I don't know if he went to court when I was over there. I, don't, I, don't, I can't recall that. Okay. If he did go to court, is there a way to, to lock the door? Yeah, the, the seals, they locked the door. Okay. I want to talk to you first about any relationships that um, Mr. Hartung may have talked to you about with his family, okay? Okay. Um, did Mr. Hartung tell you if you had any children? Yeah, he said he had one child, a son. Okay. And did he tell you anything personal about his son? Yeah, he said his son got molested when he was three years old by his brother, uh, John. Okay. And um, did Mr. Hartung tell you um, what, what, if anything, came of that? 
say he told his mother about the, um, his son got molested. His mother said she didn't believe it. And she said John was special. And see, that, that made him mad right there. He started like hating his mama and stuff behind that. Did he tell you um, anything about what his relationship was like with his mother? He said he hated his mother because of the way she treated him. She treated him different from the other boys. Did he say why? And they had different daddies. Any other reasons he was upset with his mom? Yeah, and she, um, he, she left him out the wheel. That really made him mad, he said. And what about um, Mr. Hartung's son, ab about the will? Oh, she left him out too. That made him mad. Did he tell you, um, I guess his mom told him that he was out of the will? Yeah, he said his mama told him back in 2012 that he was out of the will, him and his son. Now, did Mr. Hartung say anything about what his relationship was like with John? He said he didn't really like John like that. Why by, was that? By his son getting molested. Okay. And did he say anything about what his relationship was like with his other brother, Richard? He said he and Richard was all right. Okay. Now, did there come a time when Mr. Hartung talked about uh, the murder of his family. Yeah, he told me. Okay. And did he tell you who killed his mother and two brothers? He said he killed them. Did he tell you why? He said he want, he, he want the money because she left him out the wheel. Okay, so... So if he was mad at his mom, why not just kill his mom? Why the two brothers? Because the money would go to, uh, to, the, to the brothers because he was never in the wheel. Okay. Did Mr. Hartung tell you um, if his family had money? Yep. Okay, what did he tell you? He told me uh, the, two, the brothers' uh, granddad had worked at Goodyear. And, you know what I'm saying? And the granddad left them a lot of money, left the daddy a lot of money. When the daddy passed, the sons them got the money and stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Did he say how he found out that his family had money? Uh, from his mama telling him. Now, did he tell you if um, the murders were, was it just something that kind of happened or was it something he'd been thinking about? Well, he said he'd been playing it the last, last three, like three to four years. He said a Ouija board made him go overboard though. The what, I'm a sorry? A Ouija board. What about a Ouija board? He said that really made him do it, made him go overboard. Now, did he tell you um, any details about the day the murders actually happened? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, what did he tell you? Um, well, did he tell you when he went over there? Yeah, he, he went on up like 11, early, like 11 o'clock, something like that. Okay. And do you know um, what day? He said on a Tuesday. He always goes there on a Tuesday. He said he always goes there on a Tuesday? Yeah, yes, ma'am. And when he went over there on the Tuesday, did he tell you um, what he did? Okay, so he first said, he, he, when he went over there, he said he left his dog, Zena, because he knew what he was going to do. So he left the dog over there, then he went over there and cooked. Okay, did he tell you what he cooked? He said he cooked chicken and corn, I think it's green beans or something like that, and biscuits. Okay, okay. and um, after he cooked, 
Did he oh. tell you what he did? Okay, he said he went and took some cameras down because his mother got hurt one time. She fell, and I guess the brother Richard had installed some cameras. He took them down. Okay. All right. And um, did he say if the family ate or not? Say it again? Yeah, did he, yeah did they he, ate. Okay. And then what happened after they ate? He, he said he killed his brother after that, okay. which is John. I'm sorry? He killed his brother, John. Okay. Did he tell you um, how he killed his brother, John? He said he hit him in the head from behind and cut his throat. Did he tell you what he hit him with? I think he said a hammer. I can't recall. Okay. And then did you say he slit his throat? He said he cut his throat. Cut his throat. Yeah. Did he tell you where, um, where John was when this happened? He said he was like in, like in a den watching TV. Um, did he tell you what he did after he um, did that to John? He went to his mother, and then he, he tortured her so she can tell the uh, accommodation for the safes and stuff. He said he tortured her, I'm sorry? He tortured her. How? He cut a, a left pinky finger so he can tell the accommodation for the safes and stuff. Okay. And did he say if he got the combinations to the safe? Yeah, she told him where it was in a black purse. Okay, and um, did he say what else he did to his mom? Did he say he hit her in the head and slit her throat? Did he say what he hit his mom in the head with? No, he didn't. I, I can't recall. He just said he hit her in the head. Okay. <coughs> did he tell you where um, his mother was? In the, in, the, in the front room watching TV. Okay, after he um, did this to his brother and his mom, did he say what he did? He said he went and got the stuff, like money out of the, uh, the safe and stuff. Okay. In his mama's room. He said there was a safe in his mom's room? Yeah, in the closet. In her closet. Did he... Um, did he say anything about Richard, what happened on that day? He waited till Richard came home. And, you know, Richard, he said Richard always come through the back door, and he shot Richard. But he said he didn't, like, he didn't kill him, it didn't kill him, so he, he, Richard put up a struggle. Okay. And um, did he say anything else about Richard? He said he, uh, he cut Richard, cut Richard throat and stuff. He said Richard put up a fight with him, though. Did he say anything about the, um, did he say why he had to use a gun? He said Richard was a big, like 300 pounds, and plus he's, he's like worked for Homeland Security. Other than the safe in the mother's room, did he tell you about any other safes? Yeah, he, he told me about another safe, too. Okay, and what about that? He said he got money out of that safe. Okay. Did he say where um, that safe was? No, he didn't really say where that safe was. Okay. Now, did he tell you how he knew where the safes were in this house? He said he always snoop around the house. He didn't know where it was. He, did you say he snooped around the yeah, house? Yeah, he snooped around the house. Like in general? Like, like yeah, just snoop around, like just look at, look at stuff. Okay, and when you say he snooped around, was it just on this day or when he'd been over there previously? He, when he'd been over there previously. Okay. He knew where everything was. Now, did he tell you um, anything else that he may or may not have done with the bodies? He, t he told me that uh, he put clothes on the body so they couldn't tell the time, the death of the time. They got killed. Okay. Did he tell you um, what kind of gun he used? 
He didn't really say what time. He had to say, the only thing he told me, he had a silence on the gun so the neighbors couldn't hear. But he didn't tell you, like, what caliber? No, nah, he didn't tell me what caliber. Did he tell you what he did with the gun? No, he didn't tell me what he did with the gun. Did he tell you um, what he was wearing or what he did with his clothes? He said the clothes he was wearing, he put it all in the, bra in the bag because it had blood on it and stuff. He said he had gloves and stuff on. Did he, if, he, if he put his clothes in, in a bag, did, I mean, did he tell you he changed his clothes? Yeah. He, 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 the clothes he came on, he, came, he said he came on with some shorts when he came over there. Okay. When he got in the clothes, because he already had clothes over there. He already had clothes at the yeah, house? Yeah, he already had clothes at the house. And did he tell you what he did um, with the clothes that had the blood on them? He said he gave everything to a priest, the money and stuff. Did he tell you um, where the priest was? He said, on oh, now my road. Did he tell you um, that law enforcement has searched his car or anything about his car? Yeah, say, yeah, he said he searched his car. Okay. And did he say if they found anything in it? No, they didn't find nothing in no. it. And did he say why? Because he put everything in the bag, so nothing, you know what I'm saying, would leak out of nothing, like blood and stuff. Okay. Now, did he tell you if he um, unlocked any doors, unlocked any gates, locked any doors, locked any gates, anything of that nature? He said he, he unlocked his mama's back gate, so, so it can make it like other people, somebody else did it. Did um, Mr. Hartung tell you any kind of, like, defenses he was going to try to use? Oh, he told me that he was going to try to use the defense for us. Like, his brother got some trouble at Walmart, John. He could say he was going to use that. John might molest a uh, child at Walmart. And then he said Richard was messing with a married uh, lady, and he was going to use that so somebody, somebody could have killed Richard because he was messing with a married lady. Okay. And... Um, what about where Richard worked? Did he say anything about that? Yeah, Homeland Security, you know what I'm saying? Like he, maybe it had something to do with right. that? Right. Okay. He was going to use that for him. Do you remember when, the month and year that you spoke with law enforcement? I want to say about April, maybe May of 2016. And then did you speak with them again about a month later in 2016? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Correct. Now, after that, um, were you moved away from Mr. Yeah, Hunter? I was moved away. Okay. And then you have you had any contact no, with I had no contact with him. Okay. Those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Kirkland. Okay. Mr. Purifoy, you've been convicted of felony, as you said, six or seven times? Yes, ma'am. And a conviction for a crime of dishonesty? Yes, ma'am. In April of last year, do you remember giving a deposition? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. And uh, Ms. Jensen was there, and I was there, and Mr. Griffith was there? Yes, ma'am. And that was given 
at Graceville Correctional Facility? Yes, ma'am. And we, you were asked the question at that time. Looking at page four, line 25. You were asked the question at that time about how many convictions you have. Yes, ma'am. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Just read the last couple lines on it. Okay. When you were asked the question, how many convictions have you had, your response was, I don't know, a couple of them, three of them. Right. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And would you agree that a couple or three is different than six or seven? Uh, yes, ma'am. And your either six or seventh is the one that you're currently serving a prison sentence for? Correct, ma'am. That's for attempted murder? Yes, ma'am. And that was for attacking someone with a hammer? Correct, ma'am. And are you familiar with the term jumping on someone's case? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain what that means? When people jump on people, some people tell people about their case and stuff, and they, they, they call the state attorney and, and tell them, you know what I'm saying? They know something about this case. Okay, so that's that if I understood you right, you were saying that's when um, one person will say they've got information about a different person's case and then they'll contact the state attorney? Yeah. And the reason for that is trying to get a benefit for themselves, correct? Right. So that's what you've done with Mr. Hartung's case? No, I ain't jump on his case. Like, you know what I'm saying, trying to get a benefit. I just like the way he said he did his mother. I got a close relationship with my mother and how he was telling me. Okay, would you mind slowing down just okay, a little okay. bit? And would you repeat that, please? I say, the way he was telling me how he did his mother, it was, it was sad. And I got a close relationship with my mom, you know what I'm saying? And I just, like, thought it was real wrong. And I'm going to set the record straight. He, he, he know he told me this. Okay. I haven't asked you another question. Okay. So just a few minutes ago, you testified that you had, that you're testifying today because you were getting a benefit on your case, correct? Right, hoping to get a benefit. And you actually also testified that you have gotten a benefit, correct? No, I, I haven't gotten a benefit. I got 30 years. It was a 30 year count now. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay. So in the past, other than this case, there was another incident where you jumped on someone's case, correct? No, ma'am. I had a federal case. In a I federal co case. Code offenders. In a federal case, you agreed to testify against two of your code defendants, correct? Right. And for that, your sentence was, was reduced by a number of years. Yes, ma'am. Correct. So because you had done that, that was about 2004, and it worked for you then, um, you knew that you could get a similar benefit in state court, correct? Not really. So you were originally looking at a life sentence if you were sentenced under the sentencing guidelines for this attempted murder charge? Yeah, if I went to trial, yes ma'am, correct. Um, and not even if you went to trial, just if you were sentenced under the sentencing guidelines and convicted as charged, you were looking at a mandatory life sentence. Right. You were arrested on this case in February of 2016. Right, correct, ma'am. You've been incarcerated since then? Yes, ma'am. 
you turned 42 in May of 2016 while this case was pending? Right. Excuse me. Yes. And at this time, you are 45? Correct, ma'am. So meeting Mr. Hartung really changed your life, didn't it? I didn't change my life. No matter. After your 42 years at the time and your six or seven felony convictions and your crime of dishonesty, you decided when you met Mr. Hartung, according to your testimony today, that you wanted to do the right thing because you think what he did was wrong? Yeah, correct. And you did testify a few minutes ago that the agreement made for your current case um, where your mandatory life sentence was reduced to a cap of 30, that was in exchange for your cooperation in this case, correct? Correct. And in fact, you're hoping to get a further reduction in your sentence based on your testimony here today. Yeah, correct. And let me refer you refer you back to the deposition that was taken in April, page 14, line 24. Um, and you were placed under oath at that deposition, correct? Uh, correct. You were sworn to tell the truth? Correct. <clears throat> May I approach the witness, Your Honor? So in April of last year, at your deposition where you were sworn to tell the truth, you were asked the question, did you make any agreement through your attorney, Mr. Roberts, Ms. Shea, or with anybody else as to what type of sentence you would receive if you testified? And you said, no, sir. And then you were asked, are you hopeful of getting any type, any kind of mitigation in the sentence? And you said, no, sir, I think it was wrong how he killed a 79-year-old mother. And today you've testified that first that with Ms. Jensen asking you the question that you did get a benefit. Right. And then you denied again when I asked you the first time that you got a benefit. Right. And in the deposition under oath, you said that you did not get a benefit. But the fact is you did get a benefit, correct? No, it was 30 years. I don't call that no benefit. Okay. Is 30 years less than life? 30 years death life, but it's life, it's a life sentence. I'm sorry? 30 years is a life sentence in, in state prison. Well, at this point, um, at this point, um, if you were sentenced in 2016, you've already got several years credit, and at the time you were sentenced, you already had over 500 and some days for credit, correct? Correct. <coughs> so, before you met Mr. Hartung, you were sitting in jail, 
looking at a life sentence, looking at spending the rest of your life in prison, right? Right. That was your situation. And at that time, you lived with your mama and your kids, right? Right. So you were looking at never being able to go home to any of them. Right. In fact, you were going to die in prison. Right. So that was your life in April of 2016? Not really. It's called, it's, it's called they say okay. you Okay, can... I'm not asking you a question. Okay. So your life in April of 2016 was you were looking at spending the rest of your life in prison, correct? Right. So when you met Mr. Hartung, your prospects for the future started looking brighter, didn't they? No, I wouldn't say that. Isn't it true that it was common knowledge around the jail and around the pod um, that Mr. Hartung was charged with three, three counts of murder? Right. Everyone knew that? Yeah, a lot of Every, people knew it. People talked about it? Yeah, he talked about it. Other inmates were talking about it? Yeah. In fact, sometimes it was it would be on the news or in the papers and, you know, other inmates would bring in information? No, nah, I ain't never, we never seen him. He always said, talk about his own case. You started trying to basically court Mr. Hartung's trust and confidence, correct? Um, nope. Okay, you started talking to him? That's what I talking to him. Okay. And you started talking to him about, um, first it was about football? Football. Like you were just trying to be his friend? He started, to, he started, he brought the football up and he asked my team I like, and I told him Florida State. He said he liked the Alabama. And then he started talking to you a little bit about Wicca? Correct. And you pretended to be interested in Wicca, correct? Just to get him to trust you and talk to you? He was, he was just saying stuff about Wicca. I ain't never really known about Wicca. And, you know, I just like, wanted to hear, hear him talk. Because stuff he was saying was like crazy to me. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Hartung told you that he was a, a Wiccan, right? Right. And you didn't know what Wicca was. I didn't know what it was. But then you told him um, that you were interested in Wicca. Right. Because you wanted to get him to talk to you, right? I, yeah, right. And you weren't really interested in Wicca. No, I'm interested in that. So that was just a lie. I'm interested. I just wanted to hear him talk. Okay, he's... okay, so that was a lie, correct? Right. And it was a lie just to try to get him to talk. Correct? Not really. And you told Mr. Hartung that you practiced voodoo. Correct. And you didn't practice voodoo, did you? No. And you told him that just to get him to talk to you? Let's talk about the wicked stuff. Because we used to laugh at him. Okay, we, thought it was funny. we thought it was funny when he used to run around telling people he was a witch and stuff. Okay, that wasn't my question. Okay, go ahead. My question was, um, you told him you practiced voodoo just to get him to talk to you. Is that right? Not really. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a lie, wasn't it? Did you practice voodoo at that time? I didn't practice voodoo. I never do voodoo. So if you told it. Mr. Hartung you practice voodoo, that was a lie? If you said. And that lying to Mr. Hartung, um, obviously, that wasn't an honest thing to do, was it? I won't call it lying to him. So you don't call it lying, even though you were not telling him the truth? I don't call it lying. So 
So back to your plea agreement. So you have, in fact, benefited from coming forward in this case, correct? Not, I don't call it benefit. You're not serving life sentence? Well, you might well say 30 years of life sentence. Okay. You're not serving a life sentence? No, if I got 30 years. On 85%, you got to do 25 years. Okay. I'll ask you the questions. I don't have life, can... no. Okay. I need you to answer the questions I ask, okay? Okay. So you made a plea agreement with the prosecutor in your case. Is that right? Your attorney made a plea agreement on your behalf. My attorney, you, you, you say so. Well, was it you or was it your attorney? I guess it was my attorney. It wasn't me. So you were allowed to enter a plea with a maximum of 30 years instead of life. Right. And of that 30-year sentence, are you hoping or expecting to get some gain time? I'm going to object that this is an ask and answer. So, Mr. Purifoy, you expect to get some gain time to reduce your sentence? To me, by gain time, you get gain time in prison. Okay, gain time means your sentence gets reduced. No, that ain't what gain time means. Gain time, when you work in prison, you earn gain time. You expect to get some gain time from your sentence? Your sentence? Yeah, I expect to get gain time while I'm in prison, working in the kitchen or something. That ain't, that ain't gain time. Your sentence is going to be reduced, correct? I don't know. So we talked earlier about jumping on someone's case. And you tried to get other people to jump on Mr. Hartung's case, didn't you? No, correct. That's not true. You spoke with uh, Mr. Frankly Robinson? Franklin Robinson, I don't know him. Dominique Warren. Dominique Warren, I just know him, but in the pod, I never really talked to him. Lamarcus Hickson. I don't know him. Kendrick Washington. I was his roommate for about two or three days. And you spoke to Mr. Washington and said that. Objection, hearsay. It's, yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Purifoy, isn't it true that you spoke with Kendrick Washington about jumping on Mr. Hartung's case? He asked him about why I got moved, and I told him. Okay. This is a yes or no answer. <coughs> Say it again. This Ask is a yes or no answer. Say the question no. Isn't it true that you spoke with Kendrick Washington about jumping on Mr. Hartung's case? No, nah, I ain't speaking about jumping on his case. He asked okay. what I got moved for. You're familiar with the term discovery in a legal case? Uh, yeah. And discovery is basically, it's got police reports and witness statements and various kinds of reports and information about someone's case, correct? Yeah, correct. So in discovery, the details about someone's charged offense are, are contained? Yes, yeah, sometimes. And generally, any, any statements made by witnesses are going to be part of discovery? Uh, I guess so. I don't know for sure. How about a DNA report? That's usually part of discovery if there is one, right? Uh, I think so. 
So basically, discovery is the, it's the evidence that the state has against a particular defendant? Right. And generally, inmates are given discovery by their attorneys? Yep, sometimes. Okay. Pretty much everybody got discovery, right? Yeah, I didn't get one. Everybody else got discovery but you? A lot of people don't get discovery. Okay. Page 47, line 18. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, Do you recall in the, the deposition that took place back in April, um, you said everybody got discovery. Right. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. And when an inmate is given discovery, that inmate has to keep it in a cell, right? When that inmate is in the county jail? Right. Because the inmate has no other place to keep it, right? Right, correct. Inmates don't have lockers in their cells? Uh, nope. There's no secure place to lock up any kind of valuables or papers? No, nope. just put it on your bed and stuff like that. And isn't it true that sometimes inmates will look through another inmate's discovery? I don't know that. Well, when that happens, isn't it possible that if one mate... So, Mr. Purifoy, you're aware that Mr. Hartung had discovery? Nope. You don't know that he had any discovery? Nope. <coughs> About any paperwork at all? Did he have any paperwork in his cell? I don't know, but he tried to show me something one time. I told him I don't, I don't want to see it, some blood or something. Okay. Page 47, line 4. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. So when you were asked the question in the deposition this past April of did Mr. Hartung spend a lot of time looking through his discovery, your response was, well, I wouldn't know. I know people come in that room. Well, he don't let nobody touch his paperwork. Right. So you did, in fact, know that Mr. Hartung had some paperwork in his cell. Yeah, I know he had paperwork, but I don't know what discovery and all this stuff. I never looked at it. And you testified a few minutes ago, or a little while ago, that Mr. Hartung would, he would leave his cell to get food. Um, 
You said he never went to medical, and you testified that the door was locked as if an inmate went to court. Right. So, yeah, they're locked. Okay. And you know Mr. Hartung had court dates that would come up periodically, correct? No, nah, I don't know that. I, when I was in there, he, I don't think he never went to court. He never went to court? I don't, can't remember. Okay. I, don't, I don't think so. All right. Um, well, isn't it true that the way the, the county jail is, where you were housed and where Mr. Hartung was housed, there are two inmates to each cell, right? Right. right. Sometimes even three. Right. Right. So when one of those inmates in the cell goes to court, but the other inmate does not, they do not lock the cell, correct? Right, right. And that paperwork that Mr. Hartung had, he was very protective of, correct? I guess so. He didn't normally let other people look at it? I don't know. Okay, and a few minutes ago, um, you agreed that you said in the deposition in April, he don't let nobody touch his paperwork. Right. Right? So he was protective of his paperwork, correct? Right. A lot of everybody in the county jail who get paperwork, they protected their paperwork, not just him. And do you recall giving a, an interview to um, Mr. Wright from the state attorney's office, Matt Infinger, and your attorney back on May 4th of 2016. Yeah, I think so. And do you recall at that time using the expression, he guards his paperwork like a dog? You recall that? Uh, I think so. I can't remember. It's been a while, about three years ago. Come up four years ago then. April of 2016, you sent a note to the state attorney's office? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Can I approach the clerk, Your Honor? Yes. I'm showing you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 22. Do you recognize this? Judge, I would move to admit Defendant's Exhibit 22. We provided it to the defense judge, no objection. So, Mr. Purifoy, you sent a, a note to the state attorney's office in April of 2016? Correct. And in that note, you said, Dear State Attorney, I have all the detail about Donald Wayne Hartung, about how he murdered his family, and why how killed all of them, what he did with. I know what day he did and time left how he killed brother last when he came home, how got them their money in the safes, how did his mother, what he took from her, I'd be willing to testify for the state if need am in the same cell with him he told everything and then you signed it Marlon Purifoy come ASAP correct? correct ma'am and then below that you wrote I have detail about Donald Wayne Hartung 
case. He told me his motive to, and then, then it scratched out. And then we have the envelope here that you pushed, that, that you put the note in, which I showed you just a moment ago, correct? Correct, ma'am. And that's part of the same exhibit. And it has your name in the upper left-hand corner and your return address, which is the Escambia County Jail? Correct, ma'am. And it's addressed to the head state attorney? Correct. Now, let's talk for a minute about how the Escambia County Jail is laid out. Um, there are pods and there are cells, correct? Correct. And a pod has about, what, 12 cells in it? Correct. And then each cell has generally two inmates in it? Correct. So a pod and a cell are not the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. So in this note, when you wrote to the head state attorney and said that you're in the same cell with Mr. Hartung, that was a lie, wasn't it? No, in prison term, you can say cells and stuff. It can, it can be like dorms and stuff. You can say what cell you're in. You can like say uh, cell one and stuff like that. Well, in fact, you were not in the same cell with Mr. Hartung. We the same pod. You were in the same pod, right. but not the same cell. Not the same cell. <coughs> So after you sent this note to the state attorney in April of 2016, you had a meeting on May 4th? I can't recall the date. Does that sound about the right, right. general time frame? Right, somewhere like that. So at that meeting, you were there, your attorney was there, and Wainwright was there, and Matt Enfinger was there? Right. So you, you told them at that time some things that you said you'd learned from Mr. Hartung, correct? Yeah, correct. And that interview lasted about 27 minutes? I think so, about 30 minutes like that. And after that interview, you didn't receive any plea offers with a reduced sentence, did you? Uh, nope. So then on June 17, <coughs> 2016, you communicated through your attorney that you had some new information about Mr. Hartung, didn't you? Uh, I think so. So saying you had some new or more information got you a second meeting, correct? Right. So the same three people were there as the ones who were at your first meeting? Yeah, I can't recall, I think so. And that one lasted about 10 minutes? I, I can't recall. And a little while ago, when Ms. Jensen was talking to you, um, you said that Mr. Hartung had said he killed him for the money. Right, correct. Correct. But you also said he was, he was mad at his mom because his mom didn't believe him about John molesting Mr. Hartung's son. Right, his mother got mad. He got mad because when the son told him, he told the mother and the mother didn't believe it. So, then you also said that uh, Mr. Hartung was mad at John for molesting Mr. Hartung's son, correct? Yeah, he's mad at his brother, molesting his, uh, his son, messing with his son. But not mad at Richard. No, I'm not mad at Richard. So, um, and then you also said that the, the Ouija board made him do it. Yeah, that's what he told me. Okay, so the motive was either money or 
it was that he was mad at his mom and his brother, or it was because the Ouija board told him to do it? That's your testimony? No, he was, it was about the money, because he always liked to brag. Like he's going to go to Miami and stuff, hang out with some girls and stuff. But from what you testified to, there were three different motives. He said the Ouija board like, took him over the edge to go ahead and do it. And you testified earlier that, that Mr. Hartung was angry because his mother had written Mr. Hartung's son out of the will. No, written both of them out of the will, him and his son. Okay. Do you recall this interview that you gave on May 4th right. in 2016? Mm -hmm. And at that time you said he was, in your words, really pissed because his mother wrote Don Jr. out of the will. Yeah, it was both of them, though. Okay, but that's not what you said in that first interview, correct? I can't recall. Man. It's been like four years ago. Well, did the truth change? I'm just going by what he told me. He know he told me this stuff. Earlier today, you testified that Mr. Hartung said he went over to his mom's house on July 28th, about 11 o'clock. Yeah, about something like that. Okay. He said and he went early over there, as usual. And do you recall being asked the question in the deposition? about what time um, Mr. Hartung had supposedly said he went over there? Right. Page 17, line 25. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yeah. Okay. So in the deposition, when you were asked the question, um, just walk me through from the beginning, you right. started and said, you say you went over there about 12 o'clock or 12.30. Right. Okay. And today you said 11 o'clock. Right. He told me he went early. As you. You testified a little while ago that um, Mr. Hartung had gotten the combination to a safe out of a black purse. Correct. And do you recall in that interview on May 4th of 2016, you said he got it out of an old purse? Well, black, old. And do you recall on your, your second interview... from June 17th, 2016, you said he didn't describe the purse. He told me black purse. But do you recall that you said he didn't describe the purse? In June. I can't I can't remember, man. That's been a while ago. I just know he said a black purse. Me and him talk about a lot of stuff. And when did Mr. Hartung supposedly tell you that he went to look through the safe in the floor? After he killed his mother. That was the first thing he did. Yeah, he went to it went to, uh, he went to the safe to get the money and stuff and jewelry and stuff.
And how much money did Mr. Hartung supposedly tell you he got out of the safe? I know he said like a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe 300,000. He said a lot of money. And do you recall your interview from June 17, 2016, you said he took almost $500,000 out of that safe. Right. And today your testimony is a couple hundred thousand, maybe yeah, three. Yeah, he said hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I, I know he said a lot of money. And today your testimony is he got 300,000? Three, 400,000. He just kept telling me a lot of money. He said different things, you know what I'm saying? I just go about what he said. testified a few minutes ago that Mr. Hartung told you that he gave the money he got to a high priest? Yeah, to a priest. Okay. And he gave all the money or some of the money? He gave jewelry and stuff like that to him. All the money or some of the money? I can't know. I'm just going by what he said. He said he gave the money to him. Well, I'm asking you what he said. He said he gave most of it. I guess he said all. He said he gave the money to him. And this was a, a high priest who had some kind of a church on Nine Mile Road? Correct. And this was a high priest who rode a Harley Davidson? Correct. Just a moment, Your Mr. Purifoy, do you know how long Mr. Hartung was in jail when you first met him? He stayed in there for a while, like a couple months, like seven, eight months. And do you know how long he's been in jail since you had talked to him last? Yeah, he's been there for a while, some years. Years? Yeah, he's been there for a while. That's all my questions. Can you be direct? <coughs> Mr. Purifoy, uh, yes, Mr. Hartung may have had some paperwork in his cell, correct? Right. Do you know if it was even about his case? Yeah, I don't, I don't, he, I don't know if it's about his case or not. Okay. Now, all the times that he called you to his cell, right. did you read any discovery, paperwork, anything? I never read nothing in his paperwork. I go by everything he told me. That's it. He, okay. And, and whatever paperwork he may have had, you don't even know what it was? I don't know what it was. Okay. Correct. Now, um, Ms. Wilson was asking you about this voodoo talk. Right. Do you remember her asking you about that? Right. Okay. Now, you also said that you thought the Wiccan stuff was crazy. Right. Were you telling Mr. Hartung that you believed in voodoo to get him to talk about Wicca? Right. Okay. Was it interesting to you? Yeah, it was like interesting and funny, too, what we were talking, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, you said that you, you got a cap on correct. your attempted murder case, correct? Correct. Okay. And did your judge know, was your judge made aware that you were cooperating in this case? Right. Okay. He still gave you 30 years. He still gave me 30 years. Okay. And you are 45 years old today, correct? Yeah, 46 in May. I'll be 46 in May. Okay. So you did not think that 30 years was a benefit? Right. And you don't know today whether that same judge is going to reduce your sentence or not. No, I don't know because I ain't been promising that. Okay. Now, you mentioned earlier that um, 
you're close to your mom, correct? Yeah, real close. Okay. Now, when Mr. Hartung told you what he did to his mom, did that bother you? Yeah, it bothered me when he said it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, members of the jury, we're going to take a short break. Two-hour break. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes.